Hello, welcome, welcome. In this series, we're trying to build a CPU from scratch. And in the previous episodes, we built up this processor. In the last episode, we cleaned it up a bit. So we just tried to minimize the number of wires that crossed over each other. There's still a few left, but it's greatly reduced from what it was. And we added a couple of modules. We added the fetch module here and we added uh, this kind of shim module to hide away some of the complexity in this area. So I'm pretty happy with this, and I think we should move on to the next step. And I think the next step would be to try and implement a more interesting program. So the program that I had in mind was a Fibonacci sequence. It's kind of like the hello world of building your own CPU, but there is one issue with being able to implement the Fibonacci algorithm in that it involves adding two numbers together that have already previously been added, if that makes sense. So if I get out a text box, I can kind of explain more visually what I mean. So the algorithm kind of goes like this. So this is the algorithm that I'd kind of like to implement. So we want to set R1 to 0 and R2 to 1. 1 will be the first Fibonacci number. And then we add R1 and R2. And then R3 will be our output register. Uh, so we grab R2 because that's the next Fibonacci number. And then R1 plus R2 and store that in R1. And then R1 will be our next Fibonacci number. And then we loop back to two. And we just do this over and over and over again. And actually, we can simplify this because this instruction kind of already exists. So we can just reuse that. So the only new instruction we need is adding two registers together. So let me just put the instruction we already have in here. So let's figure out how we can do this. The first thing we need to be able to do is read two registers at the same time. Uh, let's go with left and right into our execution unit because that's a little bit less ambiguous. Left is going to be RD, and right will be RS, I think. There we go. I think that makes sense. Let's rename the inputs here. This is our left input, and this is right. So. Some part of the computer needs to decide whether value from the instruction is on the right or it comes from the registers. And generally that would be the job of the decode unit to decide that. So you'll notice that the left and right have also been swapped around before value would end up on the left hand side of the add in the execute unit. I swap them around because that's actually backwards from the design that I have in mind. So now is as good a time as any to fix that. So let's add that decision into our decode unit. So I'll go with RL for the register left and RR for the register right, I guess. So we have five leftover bits. Let's use one of those leftover bits to decide which format the instruction takes, either register, register, or uh, register what's called an immediate, but I've been calling value, so register value. I'm 
Okay, let's test this out. Don't think this is necessary anymore. Close enough. I think that's fine. So I believe this is now on the wrong wire. I think it's supposed to be on the right one. We're going to have to cross over quite a few wires to do this. Not ideal. We put them back on the top. I feel like I keep waffling back and forth, but then there's only one wire to, and hmm, I think that'll work better. Okay, we need to add this to our assembler as well. What do we call this? Um, I'm not feeling creative right now. Two rig will work. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's try entering a program and see if there's any bugs. Um, I guess we don't really need this because we're assuming that the registers start with zero, start as zero anyway. So, all right, there's our program. Let's actually move things over a little bit there. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to enter programming mode and we want to enter in this program here. So on line zero, we have R2 is equal to R2 plus one. So, and it's not a two reg. Advance, and we see R1 or R2 did become one. Awesome. Okay, and then for line one, we have R2 is equal to r2 plus r1 and the value is zero although it's ignored in this case and it is a two reg so this is what it's saying it'll do r2 is equal to one plus zero which i think that's exactly what we want to do all right and we have to advance so we have two which is r3 is equal to r2 plus zero equal to R2, and it's not a two reg. So R3 is equal to R3 is equal to R2 plus zero. So this is not useful in this case because it's not a two reg. I'm not sure what to do about that, but um, yeah, I think this is correct. Okay, line three is R1 is equal to R1 plus R2. So this isn't two reg, but get there. R1 is equal to R1 plus R2. R1 is equal to R1 plus R2. And then R3 is equal to R1 plus zero. And then on line five, we have a jump to one. 
Okay. So R3 should become our Fibonacci sequence. So 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 1, uh, 233, 377, 610, 987, 1597, 2584. Awesome. It looks like it's working. So I think this is a pretty good place to end it. We have the ability to add two registers together. We can do the Fibonacci program here and we get that output. So I'm just actually going to give this a name here. I think is it two B's? I think it's two B's. Maybe it's not. Ah, it doesn't matter anyway. I probably spelled that wrong. That's okay. Awesome. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope this was interesting. Bye.